And, O oh Lord, don't refuse me, for surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. You see, when we really get committed to God, where we're going to do for Him no matter what, then God's, God's got someone He can actually use. I used, to, I used to say, well, God, I'll do this and I'll do that, but I won't do this and I won't do that. I finally had to get to the place where I said, God, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, I'll be obedient to you. When I got to that position in my heart, yes. in my heart, Yes. Then God knew he had somebody he could use. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And then it's all God. It's all the Lord. Mm -hmm. We just need to get submitted to God in such a way that God knows that he can trust us. Yes. yes. Amen. God knows he can use us. We need to be submitted to God like that. Amen. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a man who finds a treasure in a field. This piece of land, and it's for sale. So he goes and sells everything he has so he can buy that piece of land. In other words, you've got to be willing to sell everything, to give up everything to come to Christ. But then you come into covenant with Jesus Christ. And then every, and what you do is you say, Father, everything I have is yours. But then he says, Son, daughter, everything I have is yours. We, we always come out of here. As long as you're following God, as long as you're obeying God, as long as you're doing what the Word says to do, as long as you're committed to obey God and follow Him in every way, then He will pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough for you to receive it all. He's opened the window of heaven. Of heaven. The Bible says He will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Amen. But we've got to sell out to God. Jesus said, instead of worrying about everything, little thing in life, he said, just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. Just follow God, just seek God, just seek to live for God in a holy way, in a righteous way, in, beyond reproach. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul told Timothy to set people in the church that are beyond reproach, yes. that are living holy life, pure lives, Yes. that are beyond reproach. The Bible says, I was reading the scriptures this morning, Forsake even the appearance of evil. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. If something that's is right. evil, even if it appears to be evil, run away from it. That's right. Forsake it. Just live for God. Just determine in your heart, I'm just going to do what's right. And if something is almost not right, I'm just not going to do it. That's right. If something looks like it might not be right, I'm just not going to do it. That's right. If I have a question as to whether it's right or wrong, I'm just not going to do it. That's right. I'm going to do what I know to do that's right yeah. and good and holy and just. Hallelujah. I'm going to live holy as he is holy. Yeah. Because it's only those who are living holy as he is holy that's going to make it to heaven. I want to make it to heaven. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Right. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The last part of Ecclesiastes says the whole matter of things. It says what the whole matter of things are. And basically it says, let's just look at that the last, last two verses of Ecclesiastes. Praise you, Father. This is not even my message, but I'm going here. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes, it's the last chapter and the last two verses. Ecclesiastes is after Proverbs. Chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Now, the whole book is good. But here, the last two verses of the book, it says the whole conclusion of the matter is this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. One, fear God. Now, a lot of people say, that's just having a reverence. You know what? It's not just having a reverence. Jesus said, don't be afraid of those who can kill your body. But be afraid of those who can not only kill your body, but can send your whole soul to hell. That's right. In other words, don't, don't, we should fear God. In that if we get into sin, we're going to hell. We need to be afraid of that. Amen. Right. We should be afraid of that. 
If, if, I, if I knew that I couldn't swim and I, I knew the water was over my head, I'd be afraid to jump into the water. Amen. Right, because I know I could die. We need to, with fear, understand that we could die if we get into sin. That's right. Amen. That's holy reverence. That is holy fear. Right? Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of God. For this is the whole duty of God. You want to obey God, fear God enough to keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of God, the whole duty of man. To fear God and to keep His commandments. For God shall bring every work. Say every work. Every word. I thought we're not saved by words. We're to encourage each other to good works. We're to not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but we're to come together and encourage one another to good works. Yes. To work good. For if we choose to willfully sin after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth therefore no more sacrifice for our sins, but a certain fearful looking for us of judgment against the adversary. You see, when we decide to go on our ways instead of God's ways, we become God's adversary. That's right. Instead of walking in the grace of God, instead of walking in, his, in what Christ has done for us, our deliverance from sin, instead of walking in that, we choose to go our way instead of God's way. Yeah. It says there's a certain fearful looking for us of judgment. That talks about that in Hebrews chapter 10. Yeah. And we become God's adversary, and we've done despite to the spirit of grace, and we tread underfoot the blood of Christ, wherewith we were made holy. Yes. Now all of a sudden we went back to our old ways yes. of living in sin, choosing to do that. Now we should repent of that sin. Father, forgive me of that. I don't, I don't ever want to do that again. Help me, Lord, never to do it again. And mean it from your heart. And then God cleanses you from all unrighteousness. He makes you holy as he is holy again. Yeah. Hallelujah. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing. Oh, I've got this hidden thing. It's not hidden from God. God knows it all. It's not hidden from God. It's not secret from God. Because God knows your heart. God knows every... People say, God knows my heart. God knows your heart. Yes, He does. He knows the intents of your heart. Yes. Just serve God, determine in your heart, I'm going to live for God no matter what. I'm going to do it no matter what. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Praise your Father. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, one day we're going to stand before God. That's called judgment day. The Bible says it's appointed once unto man to die and then the judgment. As soon as I die, I'm going to be judged. Of what? Of my, of my works. Jesus told the church in Revelation, he told all the churches, I know your works, I know your works, I know your works. Yeah. God, God judges according whether they're good or bad. Yeah. That's right. Well, God's changed now. God's never changed. That's right. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's never, ever changed. He never, ever will change. The Bible says the Old Testament is given for our admonition so that we can know the way that God works. That's you right. want to know what God's like? Read the Old Testament. Now, God did certain things that were just types and shadows of what Jesus would do for us at Calvary. Those were all nailed to the cross with Jesus, like circumcision. That represented the cutting away of the old sinful nature. It's cut away in Christ. God cuts it away from the inside out. Yes, Jesus does. does. Yes, he does. That's why we don't do circumcision anymore. There are certain things that, that God just did, like that, to make them do these ordinances, like the, sacrifice, the Passover sacrifice. Jesus became our Passover lamb. Yes. But the, 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 all these ordinances were to lead the people of Israel when Jesus showed up so they would recognize that he was the Messiah. Yeah. That's why they did all those. Well, the Bible says that the whole handwriting of ordinances, those handwriting ordinances, were all nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. So let no man therefore judge you in new moons or holy days or, or foods, meats, or foods, or respect of, of Sabbath days. Those were all types and shadows of what Christ would do for us. We are to enter into his rest. Entering into Christ's rest is our Sabbath. 
Our rest is a Sabbath. We enter into Christ. We rest in the Lord. We put our faith and trust in God, in Jesus Christ, and what he did for us at Calvary. Jesus took our infirmities, bare our sicknesses, and with his stripes we were healed. Yes. Jesus bare our, our, he bare our offenses so we could have peace, so we could have rest. Yes. He made it possible for us to forgive other people and walk in love, walk in the Spirit, walk in love, and by doing that, we have peace, we have rest, we, we have comfort. I don't have to worry about stuff because I give it to God. That's right. I rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Don't worry about anything but in everything by prayer and petitions with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Therefore, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are joyful, whatsoever peace is, things are peaceful, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. So if it doesn't fit all that, don't think about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I have been not watching the news very much. Amen. Because you know what? It is the bad news. Amen. It's not the, just the news. It's the bad news. Yes. If they find something bad, that's what they talk that's about. That's right. And I found out if I feed on that, yes. that that pulls me down. I don't yes. want anything to pull me down. Yes. Yes. I want to think on good things. Yes. I want to spend my time in the Bible. Because the Bible contains the Word of God. The words of God. Hallelujah. The Bible is the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. It is the Word of God. Jesus. I mean, there's words of men in there too, but we have to rightly divide the words of truth. Well, glory. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. I'm getting into my message now. <laughs> glory. Praise your Father. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Corinth. He's talking to us today. I'm going to read this from the modern King James translation. The first part. Then King James says, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. But that word followers means imitators. So I'm going to read this from the modern King James in the first part. Be imitators of me, even as I also am of Christ. In other words, Paul said that as he imitates Christ, the word imitate him. And that is true not only for the Apostle Paul, but for the leaders in the church that are imitating Christ. We should be imitators of those who are in spiritual authority in our lives, who imitate Christ, who are living right, who are doing the right things. In other words, another place says, and consider their, their manner of life, their lifestyle, their conversation, that, this, that they're really living for God. Follow us as we follow God. We follow, imitate those who imitate Christ. Follow those who are receiving by faith the promises of God, who are inheriting by faith the promises of God through faith and patience. Imitate those. Don't be lazy. That's right. How many knows in our flesh we have a tendency <laughs> to be lazy? Yeah. Has anybody else ever experienced that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be lazy. <coughs> work hard. Yeah. If you decide from your heart to work hard, God will strengthen you and give you the ability to do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I believe that's true. Yes. I've, I've experienced it myself personally. God gives me the strength to do all the work that I do. And I, I work a lot. Some people think pastors don't do much. I do a lot. Matter of fact, I do this Uber and I, I, I was doing Uber until I got home from Uber and Friday night at 1 o'clock in the morning. I started at 10 o'clock in the morning. Before that, I picked up bread and did some ministry around here. I started my day at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I worked over 18 hours Friday. That's a long day. Indeed. But then God renewed my strength. Yes, yes he does. Hallelujah. Now I'm doing more stuff there. Yes. Lord. Now I'm doing more stuff today. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Praise but God gives me the strength to do it. Why? Because I set my heart yes. to be an example to lead people in the way we should do things. Yes. Yes. Okay? So follow us. Follow your leaders as we follow God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 2. I hit one verse, didn't I? I got three pages of Don notes. <laughs> Glory. But I praise you, brothers, that you remember me in all things and keep the doctrines that I've delivered unto you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man, in other words, even though we're supposed to follow men that God has set in our lives, still the head of every man is Christ. And still, we're still the followers of Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he said, Some say I'm of Paul, and some say I'm of Paulus, and some say I'm of Cephas, which was Peter. He said, We're all of Christ. Amen. We follow some men, but we don't, but we if they get off from, from what the teachings of Christ are, we always follow Christ. I was reading some other scriptures that said Jesus was the first one to teach these New Testament principles. Jesus Christ. So we follow the teachings of Jesus. Above everything else, Jesus is our chief cornerstone. We're built upon the, the teachings of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone that holds everything together. Jesus. Jesus, he taught the law and the prophets. He said the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Every man seizes it and takes it by force. We have to enter into these things of God by faith. We push into these things. We, we don't just accidentally have them just because we received Jesus. We have to seize them and take them by yes. force. Amen. We, it is effort. It, we have to fight the good fight of faith. We have an adversary of the devil. He's out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his job. Don't be surprised. He's the devil. I mean, that's his job to attack you. That's his job to attack us. You know what I do? I spy harder. Amen. I, I'm going to do more for God. If the devil comes against me or my family or my church, I'm just going to fight harder. I'm going to do more for God than I ever have before. Glory to God. Glory to God. The devil's attacking our church right now with several people, Bill, Bill Owens and uh, my mother and my mother-in-law, and they're, they've all, they've, they're all either in the hospital or, or getting ready to be in the hospital. My mother's going in for surgery tomorrow, and uh, Bill Owens had surgery, I think, Friday, and uh, my, my mother-in-law's having surgery today, but I'm just going to do more for God. Amen. The devil's not going to slow me down. I'm going to fight harder than I've ever fought before. Why? Because the devil knows that we are we're on the verge of exploding. That's right. We're on the verge of exploding for God. That's right. We're going to do what God would have us to do. We're going to be who God would have us to be. We're going to we're going to show Christ to those around us, where people will know that God is in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter thirteen. Start with verse 5. And this is the New King James again. I mean modern King James. Let your way of life, this, I think it says in the King James, it said let your conversation, let your way of life be without the love of money. I think in the King James it says covetousness. And be content with such things as you have, for he has said not at all will I leave you, not at all will I forsake you, never. Hallelujah. God is never, he's always with us. He's always there to strengthen us. He's always there to help us. Yeah. He is there to help enable us as long as we submit ourselves to God Amen. and do what the Word says to do. He's there to help you do what the Word says to do. That's He's right. there to strengthen you. He's there to renew your youth like the eagles. He's there to cause you to be able to fly and not be... He's able to cause you to fly like the eagles. He's able to help you to run and not be weary. He's helping you to walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. God. Thank you. Glory. So that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do to me. Yeah. We need to have that kind of attitude. I really don't care what other people think, say about me. I don't really care what other people think about me. I only care about what God thinks about me. 
I had, I had a man come to my church, and he's a, he's a minister. His father pastored a mega church, and he's now pastoring that mega church. But he told me, Pastor Mike, if you preach against sin, people will leave your church. If I said, well, I'm not preaching for men, I'm preaching for God. If I don't, one day I'm going to stand before God on Judgment Day, and God will say, depart from me, you who work iniquity. Yeah. I, I said, I don't want to hear God say that. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful yeah. servant. Amen. Enter into the house of the yes. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to hear, well done. Amen. Not depart. Yeah. I don't want my blood, people's blood on my hands. That's what God told us in He said, if you don't warn the people, he said, their blood's on your hands. That's right. That's right. I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to make sure everybody I talk to has the opportunity to make it. Yes. Hallelujah. But I want to be an example to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Remember those who are leading you, who have spoken to you the word of God, whose faith follow. And that word follow there means imitate. So you were to watch. And then it says, considering the end of their conduct. I think it, it says their conversation in the King James. That means the way they live, their conduct. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why I just quoted earlier. Jesus, he's never, ever, he never ever has changed. He is the same today. He never ever will change. He was all through the Old Testament. That's true. That rock was Jesus. That walk the water flowed out of that, that Moses spoke to. That was Jesus. The Bible says so. That rock was Jesus. The flood, the, the water who stood up on each side. The Bible says that was they were baptized in Jesus. That's what the Bible says. That was Jesus. I believe the guy that Joshua spoke to, that was the leader of the, the host of God, I believe that was Jesus too. The leader of the host of God. He, he said, bow down. He said, take off your shoes for you're on holy ground. That was Jesus. Glory to God. Be not carried with different strange doctrines. Don't get sidetracked from the truth of the Word of God. For it's good for the heart to be established with grace, not with foods in which those who have walked were not helped. I mean, they're, they're, you know, man should not live by bread alone, but by every, by, by every Word of God. By, by the Word of God. We, our life is by the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of faith which we preach. The Word of God is the Word of faith. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You want more faith? Get more Word. Amen. Get more Word in you. Now skip down to verse 15. By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. We need to praise God all the time. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name, but to do good and to communicate, that means giving, Forget not, for with such sacrifice God is well pleased. Obey them. Say obey them. Obey them. That have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account. In other words, I'm going to have to give account someday for what I've taught you guys. So I'm going to teach you guys the truth. That's right. So you have the opportunity. Now, I can't make you live for God. I can't make you do what's right. But I'm going to give you the opportunity so you know what's right. Because one day, you're going to stand before God. One day, I'm going to stand before God. And I'm going to have to give account for what I've just told you here today. True. And if you done, went your own way, said, but, but such and such told me this. Such and such told me I could live evil and still, and still be okay with God. Because your grace covers me. God's going to say, well, Pastor Mike told you that's not right. I mean, God will tell you that. If you decide to go a different path, God will tell you that. I'm just warning you right now that God will tell you that. God, Pastor Mike told you that's not right. And the thing is, you know in your heart, because the Holy Ghost is dealing with you Amen. about it. So you really know in your heart if the, the, that the Word is true. That these things I'm speaking are true. Because the Holy Spirit is dealing with every person in the world. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, 
He will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. You see, the Holy Ghost is telling you, that's wrong, that's right. And we need to learn to trust that, what the Holy Ghost is telling us. And what you do is you can harden your heart to the Holy Ghost. You can say, wise well, don't believe that. Well, that sounds good to me. I'm going to listen to that. You do that enough, and we turn off the direction of the Holy Spirit, you'll eventually get where you've hardened your heart to. You put up a wall to the Holy Ghost, and God can no longer do it. You grieve the Spirit of God where God can no longer reach it. That's a dangerous place to be. Hallelujah. So please remember, I'm not here to rule and reign over you, but I'm here to guide you gently into the truth of the Word of God. Yes. Tom and Gil are here to guide you gently into the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Father. Remember those leading you which have spoken the word of God, whose faith follow. Our indebtor. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Submit yourselves. In other words, we still get to choose whether we submit or not. Submitting means, means to obey. Submit yourselves. The Bible says wives are to submit themselves to their own husbands. But there's some scriptures that. that Ten, many people have believed in the church have been embraced these things, saying women can't speak in the church. Gail, get up and talk. <laughs> Come to Revelation. You'll hear about it. <laughs> but anyhow, women, God can use women. Amen. The word says women, it's, it's actually a Greek word that means wives. It's talking about wives are super, supering authority over their own husbands. Amen. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about women preachers. God used women to preach. God used women to... The, the, first women, the first women in the New Testament, after Jesus rose from the dead, he told them, they came to the tomb. He told them to go, declare that he had risen. That's preaching, folks. Amen. Jesus is risen. That's preaching. Yes. God uses women not just because they're women. He uses all people. We need to learn that spiritual authority is totally different from authority in the family. But authority, and God does have heads in the family. But in the church, God has set certain people. And it doesn't matter whether they're men or whether they're women. In the church, in the body of Christ, we're to submit to those who God has placed in authority over Amen. us. But we get to choose whether we submit or not. Right. And if we're in a place where we can't submit, we shouldn't be in that place. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if we got... If we got kids or youth that can't submit to the authority and our leadership, then they don't need to be here. They can go somewhere else where they can submit to that. That's, that's right. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. And if you guys, you can't commit, submit, submit to my authority, there's probably a different church that's better for you. I'm not trying to run you off. I'm just saying be where you can submit to the authority where you're at. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is impossible for you. In other words, if, if I can't lead you with joy, if, you, if you're not submitted to my, my authority or Tom's authority or Gail's authority or Kathy's authority in this church, if you're not submitted to that, then we, we can't have joy in our, in our leading you and directing you. We want to have joy. We all want to have joy, right? Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I want to have joy. We grieve for people who do not follow our direction. We grieve. Why? Because we care about you. That's why. That's true. Because we care about you. Yes. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Turn me to Hebrews chapter 13. Oh, that's where I was just at. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 16. Verses 15 and 16. First Corinthians chapter 16.
right, let's start with verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the face, quench you like men. Be strong. In other words, be brave, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. That's love. That's a God thing. Walk in love in everything you do. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, how it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That's a good thing, right? I had somebody tell me, everybody has addictions. They said, what's your addiction? I said, I'm addicted to God. Glory That's what I told God. you. Praise the Lord. I'm addicted to God. That's my addiction. Amen. And that's what God wants to be addicted to, to follow God and do what Amen. the ministry of the saints. And submit, that you submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helped us and labored, I am glad for the coming of Stephanus and Fortunus, for that which is lacking on your part they have supplied. And so we're here to help you. We're here to help you cross that finish line, to get to the end. He that endureth unto the end shall be saved, shall be delivered. Amen. We need to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to promise. That's right. We need to press on to these things. We need to forget about our old way of living, our old life. Paul said, forgetting about those things which are past, I press forward to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We need to push into these things of God. We, we need to fight the good fight of faith. We have an adversary of the devil. He's trying to destroy us, but he's defeated foe. We need to understand we are the body of Christ in the earth. I'm a part of the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. We're all members in particular, and we're, all of our parts are important. Some people think, well, I'm not very important. You, if you're part of the body of Christ, you are important. Amen. You just need to find your place in the body of Christ and do, be faithful to do whatever God commands you to do. Whatever God leads you, guides you, directs you to do, just find your place and be faithful to do those things. Amen. Amen. God will use you. Yes, He will. Just say, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Just be faithful. You know, God will promote you if you'll be faithful. You heard the, like these three guys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were faithful to God. Mm -hmm. And they refused. They refused under penalty of death. Yeah. They refused to worship the idol that the yeah. king said. Yeah. They refused. Yeah. And the king says, and he called them up. Now, now they had favor with this king, King Nebuchadnezzar. He called them up. He said, I'm going to give you one more chance. Because he made a decree. Whoever refused to bow down to this idol, they would be put to death. He said, I'm going to give you one more chance. He said, we're going to blow the trumpets. We're going to blow the musical instruments again. And if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you in the burning fire trumpets. If you don't bow down, then worship. And they said, and who is that God? He said, and who is that God who can deliver you out of my hands? Who is that God that can deliver you? And this is what they said. It says, the God that we serve, not only is he able to deliver us out of your hands, O King, but he shall deliver us out of your hands. Amen. But he shall. If you decide to throw us in the fire. He said, but if not, we just want you to know that we're not going to bow down to your God no matter what. Amen. That's what we need to take stands like that. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to tell the truth no matter what. Paul said, I I, I held nothing back that was profitable in you. We need to let, let it all fly out. Let it all go. Hold nothing back that's profitable people. I mean, I'm telling you, if you're in sin, you will go to hell. If you're in, in the th things the Bible says, people who do such things shall not enter the kingdom of God. If you're living like that, you will go to hell. I'm warning you now. So one day you're going to stand before God in judgment. And I hope you not, have not died doing those things. I hope you've turned away from your sins because God's will, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That means turning away from your sins and turning to God and show with a changed life that you really have changed. Amen. Quit doing evil things and do what's right. Yeah. It's very simple. The whole matter of the thing is to serve God with all your heart, to forsake all evil, because the day is coming where you will have a judgment. 
The day is that every man will stand before God in judgment. And they will be judged according to whether they did evil, whether they did good. Now, if you if you die doing good, doing, living for God right, if you die in that state, then God doesn't remember you ever were a sinner again. But if, but if you die in sin, the Bible says God doesn't even remember you ever were righteous. Don't listen to TV guys who tell you, now you're a Christian, you can do what you want to do, and you're okay with God. God's just covering your sins while you're sinning. God is not doing that. You have to confess your sin with a confession of repentance. You have to turn away from your old life of sin. You have to turn to God and live for God and decide, no matter what, I'm going to live for God. I don't care if they persecute me. I don't care if the government says I can do, can't do this. I'm going to preach the truth. If they want to throw me in prison, they can throw me in prison. I'm going to live for God no matter what. I'm going to obey God no matter what. If I've got to get thrown in the prison, that's okay. If I've got to cut my head off, they can cut my head off. I mean, that does happen some places in this, in this world right now. It could happen here in this country. We just got to have our hearts set to follow God no matter what. To do obedient to what God's word says no matter what. I'm going to do it no matter what. Glory to God. What did you say, Tom? He said, don't be lukewarm. He said, don't be lukewarm. Amen. Right. Why? Because he'll spew us out of his mouth. Yes. That's what Jesus right. said. Yeah. No. You believe that's true? Jesus said. Yes. Right. Yes. I have people mock me. I had a preacher tell me, oh, I know you're one of those straight and narrow guys. <laughs> I said, you know Jesus said that. <laughs> Why would you mock something Jesus said? Yes. Jesus said, it's the way is straight and narrow. Jesus said that. And few there be that find it. It's not a real broad path to, to lead to eternal life. There's few that be that find it. We need to be those few that find it. Amen. We need to be those few that are found in Christ. One scripture says, if the righteous barely be saved. Hardly be saved. I mean, it is a, it is a narrow path. To, to follow God. But just that you're, as long as you're pressing forward to follow God in, in the way He'd have you to follow Him, as long as you're pushing into that, as long as you're forgetting the way you used to be and just pushing in to do, be who God had you to be, as long as you're that, Paul said, then you're perfect. Even though you're not perfect, really. But God sees you as perfect. Yes, He does. God said Job was a perfect and upright man. Yes, He did. But He was not perfect. But God said it. Because God saw him as perfect. Why? Because he had a heart for God. God knows our hearts. And he was still doing what he knew to do. The best he could. But he, in chapter 3, he said, The things which I have greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is coming to me. So what he did is he let down the hedge that was around him and let the devil have access. Fear destroys faith. That's why Jesus encouraged you. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Why? Yeah. Because fear destroys faith. Yeah. Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Give God praise and glory in the middle of circumstances. Yeah. Don't throw out all kinds of foul language. Just, just start praising God. I know that's hard. That's against our nature. And like we have this thing in us, this rebellious thing, it's called the sin nature. We're told what to do, and our, our rebellious things rise up. I'm not going to do that. He told me to do that. I'm not going to do that. Please submit to those who God has placed in authority in your life. Yes. Please do that. Don't rise up and say, I'm not going to do that. Please submit to God, to those who God's placed in your life. Please do that. Because then you're, you're in a way then where God, you're open to give the blessings and favor of God in your life. Amen. Then God has someone that he can, he can pour his blessings. He can pour his favor. He can pour, pour his anointing into you. He can pour his giftings into you. You're in a place where God can use you in a more mighty way than you, than you ever could even be used before. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just be submitted to God's authority. There's no true authority unless it's of God. So even like when the government people, when they do ungodly things, that's not God. It's only when they do the righteous things that's of, that's of God. You understand what I'm saying? There's no authority unless it lines up with the Word of God. If it does not line up with the Word of God. You see, the government says it's okay to abort babies. 
You know what God says? God says that's murder. Amen. The Bible says no murder shall enter the kingdom of God. That's right. So what do we do? We believe. I mean, we have to understand. I mean, we're, wives are supposed to obey your husband. If your husband tells you to do an evil thing, you're to, you're to obey God instead of man. Peter and John, they were in the temple. And the authority, the governmental authority, which were the high priests at that time, they told them, you are not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they said, well, we know you have authority. And we recognize that authority, but who should we obey? You or God? Of course, the answer is always God. That's right. Even if the government people say, we're going to beat you up. Say, go ahead, beat me up. I'll count, I'll count it as joy that I'll, for being persecuted for Christ's sake. Amen. Just count it as all joy. I mean, they love me being persecuted for Christ's sake. I'd love to be persecuted for Christ's sake. I mean, I'd just be able to rejoice that my reward in heaven is going to be greater because I'm getting bigger rewards for being persecuted. Amen. We need to put ourselves on the line, folks. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we'll start with verse 12. Hallelujah. This is the last portion of the scripture I'm going to read today. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12, we're going to start. I'm just going to warn you about this. When you watch these TV preachers, just because they say something that may sound enticing, you got to be very careful because they, they lead you. If you just follow them, the devil uses scripture to try to be, hook you in. And then what they do once they get you hooked in, then, then they're going to lead you into an unsound doctrine if you don't watch out. So even though you may hear them say some things I say, I warn you that, that sometimes if you don't know what they really believe and what they really teach, you've got to be very careful. So anyhow, That's right. glory to God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Hallelujah. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. In other words, we're to warn people if they get off track. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient towards all men. Oh, that, this is, I don't know if this is Thessalonians or Timothy. Is this Thessalonians? Yes. 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 Was I reading right? Yes. Okay. Be patient towards all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Don't do, just because somebody does you evil, don't do them evil. She said, turn the other cheek. Hallelujah. He said, bless and don't curse. See that you render evil, render, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. Say good. Amen. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. That means always rejoice. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Pray without ceasing. That means don't quit praying. In everything, give thanks. That means in everything, give thanks. Yes. It doesn't say for everything. It says in everything, yeah. give thanks. So, oh, I had a flat tire. Thank you, Father. Glory. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank You're you, Lord. mighty God. You're more than enough. Amen. You're the all-sufficient one. Start praising God and giving Him glory. James said the, this very same thing. He said, he said, count all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That means all kinds of trouble. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
And as you allow patience to have its perfect work, then you'll be perfect and entire, wanting or lacking nothing. I mean, you'll get everything you need. Just stand in faith. Just believe God. Count it as joy. The Bible says that the Bible says that Abraham was strong in faith as he was giving glory to God. You want faith? Give God praise and glory Amen. for what he has said. You see, God told Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations of whom he believed. Hallelujah. So he believed God. In everything give thanks for, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, quenching the spirit. Putting up a wall against the direction of the spirit. Despise not prophesying. So don't, don't if, if somebody's prophesying, don't despise that. But you're still supposed to judge what's being said. You see, I believe this. I believe that God, if he's not, if he's been dealing with you about something, if somebody gives you a personal prophecy, that should line up with what God's been dealing with you about. God told Elijah to go to a woman, a widow woman, who he had commanded to sustain her. So he'd already commanded her to, her to sustain him, even though she had very little. Prove all things, but prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. In other words, you're going to have you're all kinds of different prophesying things. Just prove what's being said. If it's right, if it's good, then hold fast to it. Yes. Right? Amen. Yeah. Abstain from all. Say all. all. Abstain from all appearances of evil. That's what I was talking about earlier. Yes. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly or completely. Sanctify means make you holy. Yeah. Complete. Yeah. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, we are one person. We are a spirit, soul, and body. You know that word, and, in, each, in between each one of these, it's a Greek word, K-E, and it's spelled K-A-I. It's pronounced K-E, and it links those all together into one. I've always known that until I looked at it, studied it down. I've always known because the Lord told me we're one person. Mm -hmm. I had to, I had a guy, a minister, put his arm around me. He said, Pastor Mike, he said, when we sin, it's not we, it's not us that sins, it's our body that sins. Our spirit's still okay with God. And I got big time checking my spirit when he told me that. Indeed. When you choose to sin. We are souls. We have a spirit and we have a body. The spirit part of this is what makes us eternal. Mm -hmm. But we are living souls. Yes. The soul of you, the Bible says in Ezekiel, the soul is sin that shall die. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. God breathed the spirit of life into him, the breath of life, the spirit of life. And man became a living soul. And there are so many souls and they perished in this certain city. All through the Bible, people are called souls. So we are souls. And we have spirits and we have bodies. And our spirit and, body, and, our spirit and soul are united. We're, our spirits and soul are together. And they will, it lives, and we will always live forever. And we will always, we eventually will always be a spirit, soul, and body. But we're, this is a temporary, temporary body right now. This is a corruptible body. But this corruption must be put on incorruption eventually. We're going to get a new body one day. Glory whether, God. whether we do it in the resurrection or whether we do it in the rapture. Amen. One of these days, we're going to have a new body. Thank you, Glory. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise your body. But until then, God has provided a healing for this body. Yes, he Praise your Lord. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That God sanctify you wholly or completely. I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants you to live holy, spirit, soul, and body. He wants you to be holy, spirit, soul, and body. The Bible says your body belongs to God as well as your spirit. Your body as well as your spirit. Hallelujah. Faithful is he that called you who also would do it. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. Who is this written to? The holy brethren. 
Are you holy? You're holy if you're, if you're, if you're born again and you're living for God. Yeah. And you're walking in His ways. You're holy. Hallelujah. Yeah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We need to walk with God. We need to set our hearts to follow those who God has placed in our lives. Follow them into truth. Anything that's in error, run away from it. Anything that's false doctrine, run away from it. Follow those who you have submitted to to teach you the truth, to lead you into holiness. Without holiness, we will not see the Lord. We're not going to make it without holiness. We need to walk with God. Holiness is not what kind of hair you wear or what kind of clothes you wear or anything like that. It is your walk with God. It's your walking with God. Being, being righteous, being holy, doing what's right. That's walking right. in love with yeah. your fellow man. Walking in love. Forgiving other people like God forgave you. Hallelujah. Decide. I just decided to let stuff go. If somebody wants to do me wrong, I just decided to let it go. You know how long I wait? That's how long I wait. Lord. I let it go instantly. I said, well, that, that's just... Well, I'm driving down the road, somebody like cuts me off. I just instantly let it go. I said, well, Lord, they're just probably having a, they're probably just wasn't looking where they're going. They're just having a bad day. If somebody says a cuss word to me or something or flips me off, I say, well, bless them, Lord. Just tell them, Lord. I mean, if we we'll do that, if we, if we will practice what we preach, we'll be good leaders to the people of God. Hallelujah. But we need to do that exactly what the Word says to do. I'm going to bless people and not curse them. Amen. I'm going to walk in love with everybody. I'm going to forgive people. Yes. Whether they, whether they want to be forgiven or not. Amen. Whether they, I mean, I'm going to forgive them. Why? Because the Bible says God will forgive me as I forgive others. Yes, it does. Jesus said, pray like this. Yes. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. In other words, I'm only going to be forgiven the way I forgive other people. If I want to be forgiven, I want to forgive other people. If I, faith, if I want my faith to work, I need to forgive other people. The Bible says, and when you stand praying in Mark 11, 25, when you stand praying the prayer of faith, if you have ought against any, examine yourselves. If you have ought against any, forgive them so that your Father which is in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Yes. But you don't know what they've done to me. It really doesn't matter. That's right. It doesn't really matter. Just forgive them. God said forgive them. The Apostle Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners. He murdered Christians. That's pretty bad. He murdered Christians. He said he was the chiefest of sinners, but God forgave him. Why? Because Jesus... He came to forgive us. Yes, he came he to break the power of sin in our life. Yes, he, did. he came not only to forgive us, but He came to set us free from sin. To change our life. He came to make us a new creation in Him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That word creature means creation. It means something that never existed before. We become a new person in Christ. The old person is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus. We've been raised up together with Him in newness of life. That's why we've got a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got a new name written down in glory. And it's mine.